All right, this is going to be number six from the uh, 2012 BC calculus exam, and it is a series question. Um, so in the first part, we are given this function, which is g of x, and we're asked to find the interval of convergence, which means we've got to use the ratio test. Uh, you're actually explicitly told to use the ratio test. So that's the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So a sub n plus 1, every n we see, we're going to replace with n plus 1 so an 8, 1 to the n plus 1, and then it's going to be x to the, um, so we have 2n, but now it's 2, the quantity n plus 1, which is 2n plus 2, and then plus 1 gives us 2n plus 3, over, same sort of thing will happen in the denominator, we have 2, the quantity n plus 1, which is 2n plus 2, and then plus 3, so 2n plus 5, and then uh, I typically multiply by 1 over a sub n, which is the reciprocal of a sub n, so I'm um, just writing the reciprocal of the nth term here. All right, and then close my absolute value, and then that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of... Uh, the negative 1 things cancel out because of the absolute value. We're left with a 2n plus 3 in the numerator, and x squared in the numerator because we have 2n plus... x to the 2n plus 3 over x to the 2n plus 1. Uh, subtract the exponents, and you're left with just x squared over, and then the denominator, 2n plus 5. Uh, you take this limit, you have 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 5, as you go to infinity, is just 1. Um, and x squared is always uh, greater than 0, so the absolute values aren't necessary anymore. So we just have x squared. The ratio test guarantees that this will converge if um, that is less than 1. And for that to be less than 1, we need to be between negative 1 and 1. If you can't picture that, just picture the graph of x squared, and think about where that graph is less than 1, and it's pretty easy to see it's between negative 1 and 1. Um, so now we need to test some endpoints, so if we let x equal negative 1, we end up with the summation of negative 1 to the n, negative 1 to the 2n plus 1, and then all over 2n plus 3. Um, negative 1 to the 2n plus 1, negative 1 to the 2n is just 1, so we can kind of disregard that. So we really have negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the first, so that gives us this series, um, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n plus 3. And that's a convergent uh, series by the alternating series test. Now we have to test x equals 1, which is a little less work, um, because the uh, 1 to the 2n plus 1 is just 1, so we don't have to write it. So we have negative 1 to the n 2n plus over 2n plus 3, and that also converges by the alternating series test. So to summarize, uh, the interval of convergence is going to include both endpoints. So negative 1, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1. And that is part A. Uh, part B requires us to know the error for an alternating series. Um, so the error for a convergent alternating series is um, less than the absolute value of the first term left off. And uh, this is a, they ask about alternating series frequently. And so let's figure out what the uh, first term left off was. So the error is uh, less than 1 half to the 5th over 7. And that came from, uh, we're looking at this, which is g of x. That's the first term we left off, x to the 5th over 7. Um, so this will be 1 7th. And then uh, 1 half to the 5th is 1 over 32, which uh, you'd probably have plenty of time to work out if you don't just know it. And then that's definitely less than 1 over 200. And that's what we were asked to show. So... Uh, there you go, that's part uh, B. And for part C, we are, again, going to work with this, and we have to find a series for g prime of x. So what I'm going to do is term by term differentiation. So I need the first three non-zero terms. So I get one-third, because the derivative of x over 3 is one-third, minus 3x squared over 5, because the derivative of that would be negative 3x squared over 5. And then plus, we'll have uh, 5x to the 4th over 7. Now I'm going to do the, because uh, it's the derivative of that, and do the dot, dot, dot thing. Now I'm going to work on the general term here, and just use the power rule. Remember, when you're taking the derivative here, the only variable is x. Everything else is a constant. So negative 1 to the n was a constant. It stays. Um, I'm going to use the power rule. Bring down the exponent. And then I'm going to have x to the subtract 1 from the exponent is 2n. 
and then over 2n plus 3 plus dot dot dot. And that's the whole problem. So uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.